Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. Welcome to this episode of Modern Farm Business. Many of the topics on this program are oriented towards the future, the things you can do, ways you can do things more effectively, and so on. But periodically, it's important to slow down and really look into the past. In fact, you'll find that successful people and successful businesses are well-practiced at effective reflection. This doesn't mean dwelling on the past or dwelling on our mistakes or even talking about that touchdown we made in high school 20 years ago. It means looking deliberately for lessons from our behavior, our decisions, and our experiences so we can improve for the future. So today, I'm covering four different tools you can utilize as harvest wraps up and we move into the winter to allow you to more effectively take stock at the end of this year so you can work to apply those lessons to get better next year. One of these approaches may resonate with you, and you apply it directly as I explain it. Or you might find that as I explain these, there are components and pieces that really fit your situation and what you want to dig into. I encourage you to think about what you have going on, your approach, your style, and what one or two pieces you can take and put to work. The four types that I'll cover are called first the after action review, next the 360 degree review, third is the balanced scorecard review, and the final one is called the leader life review. The first, the after action review or AAR, was developed by the US Army to improve project debriefing. It's designed to analyze what happened, why it happened, and how it can be done better next time. While it's intended for projects or events, I really believe that the annual crop year of a farm is a good example of a project. It works as a project, and it allows us a really natural beginning. It has specific activities, people that were involved, and a clear end. And so we can use that year as a project in itself that we can plan for and that we can review. So the basic elements of the AAR is you're going to have a person facilitate the discussion. It might be you or somebody that you have on your team that's really good at keeping the conversation on track and keeping it flowing. And then you're going to have all of the key players involved. And you can define who is that. Is it the three of us that are the owners of the farm? Is it all of our team? Is it people outside the farm that we bring in? Who all is going to be involved? You get to decide that. And ideally, best case scenario is you set up the review even before the year begins. Uh, So, for example, you would start the year with the team discussing questions like, what are our intended results for the year? What are the challenges that we can anticipate this year? And what are some things that are really going to make a positive difference? So you're having that planning meeting like, what, what does success look like? Then, uh, when you move into the review side of it, uh, the after action review, as the name implies, you review using really simple questions, how things went. And it gives the team a structure for review. It keeps us from slipping into uh, finger pointing or off on tangents about what went wrong or what we should be doing. It gives us these questions to get us thinking and to keep us focused. There are four review questions in the after action review. The first is, what were our intended results? You can see this question ties back to that planning question where we were saying, you know, what are our intended results? What do we intend to achieve? This takes us back to that and says, okay, what did we intend to have as an outcome? The next then is, what were our actual results? So we have to really understand, you know, what what did we accomplish? What actually happened? And so now we have this gap between what we intended and what we actually achieved. And now we can begin discussing what's going on in that gap. The third question is, what caused our results? 
This helps us to dig deeper than just looking at what the outcome was. It helps us to get past the symptoms and really move deeper into what are those contributing factors at work. And the final question is, what will we keep doing or improve? This makes sure that we both look at what's working and and make sure we don't lose that, as well as identifying what are some things that we need to get better at if we want to get better results. The After Action Review is a nice, simple, question-based framework that gets the key people around the table. I've used this approach on different projects myself, uh, like putting together a, a large meeting. It's a project, and it happens, you know, the preparation for the meeting happens over an extended period of time, and it involves a lot of people. And so after the meeting, it allows us to get everybody together, might only be for 30 minutes, and go through these after-action questions so that we can make sure to capture that as we get ready for the next meeting, we keep getting better. Now, second type of review structure is called the 360-degree review. And as the name suggests, it's really looking at the complete view of the business or the, uh, the project, whatever you have, uh, so that you can gather multiple perspectives. And this allows the leader or the team to see patterns and maybe... Um, pop up some unique ideas of how they can improve, things they could be doing differently, what others perceive their strengths and weaknesses are. And so you get that fresh outlook. And to gather the 360-degree review, you need a couple of things. Uh, You need the people that are going to be involved, and then you need the questions that you're going to use. So you begin with determining what's the critical things that we want to get a better perspective on. And then turn those things into uh, just a few questions. So let's say you want to know how your business is doing on its ability for uh, planning, execution, and maybe professionalism. So from those objectives, you can create three questions. And a question might include, from your perspective, how good is our business at planning for future projects and events? Another one would be, compared to other businesses like ours, How do we compare in our ability to execute action plans? And maybe the third would be, how would you rate the professionalism of our farm? So you're keeping it simple. You're starting with what are the areas that we want to know more about, and you're developing questions that allow people to share their insights and perspectives. The next thing you need to do is identify who are you going to gather those perspectives from. Typically, you'll have groups like owners, employees, suppliers, and customers, all sharing their perspective of whatever it is you're asking about. On the farm, in addition to yourself, you can gather input from other family members. Uh, You could get it from employees and also from people like your seed dealer, your lender, grain elevator, uh, landlord, whoever you believe has an understanding of your operation and can give you a good perspective of how they see you. And you can gather this in simple conversations, or if you like, you can go with a more formal written feedback. Now, a word of caution. You might get comments that you don't agree with. Don't get angry. Don't try to correct the people right away. You need to look at that feedback as an opportunity to reflect, uh, to learn, to get better, and actually see it as a blessing because someone's willing to share uh, some of the things that they say are maybe not so great. And if it's a one-off deal, um, maybe they just don't have a clear perspective. But if you start seeing a pattern, it's probably something that needs to be addressed. If you go into this type of a review, though, and you're just wanting to have a bunch of people tell you that you're doing a great job, you probably shouldn't do it. What you're really wanting to seek is, What are the areas that we can get better at? And you're seeking that candid feedback. I have a client that has uh, used this approach very effectively in getting feedback each year as they're making next year's plans. So they go to their suppliers, they go to their landlords, they go to people and continually solicit that type of an input. Uh, Another client that they actually get their suppliers uh, to sit around the table at the same time and have discussion about, in, in a roundtable approach, about these things. What are we doing well? What can we uh, be doing better? 
And so it's, a, it's really much more of a hot seat type of an approach. The third review is called the Balanced Scorecard Review. And this is based on the concept developed by Kaplan and Norton in the 1990s called the Balanced Scorecard. And what they were working on was a way to measure the strength of an organization beyond just looking at the financials. They wanted to take a balanced approach to the firm. And so what they did was they focused first on the mission and objectives of the firm to give them some context and some some direction uh, around the plans and the numbers. And then what they did is on the scorecard, they, they moved into four different perspectives. And these perspectives, they would measure and they would look at how are we doing in these areas. And those four different perspectives were first the people. So, you know, what are we doing on our people strategy, the employee side of it? And what is their view? How are we doing in that aspect of our, of our business? The second was the customer. How are we doing with our customer? What do they say about us? What's their perspective? What are our approaches for making sure that, you know, that relationship we have with the customer is a strong one? The third was processes. So they measured how effectively are we at implementing systems that are increasing our efficiency, improving our quality, and reducing accidents, things like that. So how, how process-oriented are we? How good are we at doing that? And what are some areas we need to improve? And then finally was the financial view. This is really looking at, you know, the, the financial side of the business. Are we turning our system of business into a profit? And, and, and are we doing that efficiently and effectively and getting better each year? This approach allows us to not get too focused in one area as it recognizes, you know, the, the financial perspective is important but really the financial side is the final stop. It is simply the outcome of all of those other three areas. So that means let's dig in deeper into the business and say a balanced approach gives us a view of how are we doing in the areas that are eventually going to contribute to the financial health of the organization. And you know this can be a, a helpful approach not only in, in reviewing the business, but really also in business planning and making decisions of what areas do we need to focus our business improvement attention. The final one is the leader life review. And this is more about the leader themselves. This is about you. It's about taking stock in all of the different aspects of your world. And what we find in business is that the firm typically can't outgrow the capabilities of the leader. The leader matters. And the Leader Life Review is about taking stock of how are we doing versus how we want to be doing in six key areas of our lives. These areas are first relational. You know, do I have friends and a good supportive system around me? Second is health. Am I eating well? Um, do I feel healthy and energetic? Am I keeping my weight down? And, you know, so on and so forth. The third is business. How is my business or work life doing? Am I learning, contributing, getting better each day? Or am I still in my 23rd rookie season at business? The next one is spiritual. Where am I? Where am I seeking to be in my spiritual aspect of, of my life? Am I following through with the time and practices that help me to grow? Next is family. Are my family relationships healthy? Am I investing in my family with decisions that are long-term or more short-term oriented? And finally is personal. Am I carving time out to do the things that energize me, that bring me joy? Or am I just giving a part of me to everyone else? If I enjoy motorcycling, am I able to carve out the time to get a regular ride in each week? If I like woodworking, am I taking the time to have some fun on some woodworking projects? It's important. So it's looking at all those six areas and saying, are there some components of this? Are there some pieces of my life that are getting out of whack? Is, is the work life taking 80% of that and leaving not much else of the other areas? How do I get back in control and uh, approach these areas that might long-term keep me from really achieving the life and the outcomes that I want. 
And so this helps me to step back, really look at me and my desires, my actual actions and what's going on. So I can either celebrate of, hey, I've made good progress. I'm, I'm on track. Or maybe taking some small steps to get myself a little bit more back on track. It's about introducing intentionality into the decisions and the actions that I'm taking. And underpinning it is really personal accountability. That where I invest my time and actions are my responsibility, not my spouse's, not my brother's, only me. I hope these four approaches to reviewing your year have given you some tools that you can use in your business and in your life. Our results aren't an accident. And how we use our off-season, just like in professional sports, makes a huge difference in the long term. My challenge to you is to take one or two tidbits from today. Try it out. Begin thinking about how we can learn from the past successes and failures to move our lives and our business forward next year. Thanks, as always, for joining me on this episode of Modern Farm Business. I love hearing ideas and feedback from you. My email is dean at modernfarmbusiness.com. If you enjoy this program, would you do me a favor and tell one friend about it this week? I look forward to joining you again next week. Thanks. Thanks.